When I looked at the other ring, I could see Monica's face when I gave it to her, you know? And I could see her saying yes. When I look at this ring, all I see is a ring. Many people buying a ring often feel stressed or nervous because they don't want to mess this up. And while I have a lot of new ring buyers who are doing this for the very first time, they don't understand how often I have clients who are redoing a ring that they made years ago elsewhere, or in some cases only one year ago. And they just, they felt that it was never quite right. And often people just live with it until years later when their feelings boil over and they decide to do it the way they envisioned in the first place. But you know, in this video, I want to talk about design mistakes and also craftsmanship mistakes to watch out for. I'm Vanessa, a diamond expert and founder of Vanessa Nicole Jewels, and I've been creating rings for over 20 years for clients all over the world. And one of the things that sets my company apart from other jewelry stores is you get to work one-on-one -on -one with the artist who's actually gonna be making your ring. And many of my clients have said when I'm doing a design consultation with them that I point out things they never would have thought to notice and then once they see it, they can't unsee it. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on how to get a truly stunning ring because you know my goal for these videos is to give you insight and confidence in what to watch out for, whether you're working with me or anywhere else on your ring. Okay, let's dive in. Number one, bulky or uneven prongs. It is so disheartening when you see a ring finally in person after waiting for it to be made exclusively for you, and then you see that the prongs look uneven. So if you take a look at this design here, this prong is not the same shape or size as this prong here. And this one has a little bit of a corner here. This one has another leading corner right there. They just have an uneven wobbliness to them and they just don't look as symmetrical and even as possible. So number one, the shape, but also just how symmetrical they are. Now, I don't mind round prongs when a design calls for it. And that is the number one style that you'll see most often because they are the fastest to produce. I typically tend to use claw prongs on my rings because I just love how they flow in line with the facets of the diamond. So if you take a look at this facet, for example, this is like a triangular claw. And that's what I like to be inspired by when I create the claws on my rings. And my clients absolutely love how it looks. And I do spend a lot of time to make sure they're done just right in order to get this beautiful claw shape and it's almost as if you don't even notice that they're there because your eye doesn't go straight to them. When you look at settings that have the round prongs, your eye tends to look at them a little bit more versus the thin claws because, I mean, they just blend in with the facets of the diamond. Here's another example, and then here's another example. So this is a ring that I did not do, but it is an example of what I typically see on mass-produced rings and even custom rings if there is not careful attention taken to who's creating it. Because you know the computer rendering is gonna show one image, but it's actually a human hand who creates the final prongs. Because when you cast a piece, the prongs come stick straight up, and then you have to bend them over, and that is where the artistic vision comes into play. Number two, prongs that snag or are scratchy. If you take a look at this ring, we didn't create this, but it's a perfect example of prongs that are unnecessarily too high. It's going to catch and snag on sweaters, anything that has fibers such as uh, clothing. And then you're gonna be left with all these little pieces of fibers that are sticking out that you're constantly gonna have to pull out. But not only that, it is going to feel scratchy against your skin if you do decide to sleep with your ring, which is not recommended, but if you do, this can easily scratch your face or get caught in your hair. It's just not a comfortable setting when the prongs are sticking up like this. And a lot of times high prong settings can catch more so than lower pronged settings. And a lot of my clients, they're nurses or they wear plastic gloves for their work and they prefer a lower profile setting. This one's considered a little bit more higher up. So it really is what your preference is. We didn't create this setting either, but it's a perfect example of where it's going to catch on things or snag. And then this prong here, it's very, very low and there's not really much metal going on here. Whereas this one's just lifted up. And so it's really not ideal when you see pieces like that, because that's what's going to catch. And people don't realize that when they picture their dream ring and then the prongs just 
ugh, they're just like a nightmare to wear. And so a lot of people say they never realize that until they start wearing it. And then they're very careful about what they purchase from then on in terms of the craftsmanship and making sure that those prongs are really nicely laid down on top of a setting. Here's an example of a princess cut ring. We didn't make this, but it's a perfect example of bulky prongs that aren't necessary. So you wanna have these chevron V tips like this when it comes to a princess cut, as opposed to the round prongs, but you can make it very, very, oh, absolutely gorgeous and harmonious with these corners instead of something like this, because this is just unnecessarily bulky. So take a look at this ring that I designed and you can see these very, very petite chevron V tips that are holding in that diamond. This ring is hot off the bench and it is absolutely gorgeous and you don't see any unnecessary bulkiness to the prongs. It's the exact amount that's necessary to securely hold in that diamond as opposed to something like this. Now I do realize that this has a halo, but even if this halo was not here, you can see how the prongs they're not unnecessarily bulky as opposed to something like this. Take a look at this radiant cut. The first issue, which isn't what I'm talking about here, but this center stone is set crooked because it kind of leans to the left, but focusing on the bulkiness of the prongs and the shape, it's trying to go for the claw shape, but it's not actually achieving the true claw. So you want to make sure that the rest of them are also even and symmetrical. Whereas this just has this uneven bulkiness. This is something you would want to avoid. Here's an example of a radiant cut. We just recently finished this one, but you can just take a look at these prongs. You're not noticing them as much because they blend in with the facets of the diamond, even if you you zoom in on the image here, you're really not noticing the prongs quite as much as something like this where you're going to be noticing that they're just not even. So here's an example of a pear cut. Now, uh, talking about the symmetry, oh my goodness, this is obviously not, these prongs are not symmetrical. This one's way down to the bottom. This one's jacked up higher than this one. If you were to take a ruler and just bring a line right all the way across, look how far down this prong is as opposed to this one. So, and then if you were to take the same ruler all the way across, it really should be around here instead of way down here. But aside from just the symmetry of it, which drives me crazy, uh, take a look at just how uneven the shape of them are and then the bulkiness of this Chevron V tip. It's just not necessary. Even when you have a solitaire, this is really how ideally it would look where you have these very thin dainty claw prongs that are holding in the diamond. And you could also have an extra prong here, just like this one has four prongs here and then the chevron V tip. You could also add one here. It just wasn't necessary in this case. We've got plenty of support under here for this diamond. Whereas something like this, it's just jacked up so unnecessarily high and there's no support underneath here. So you absolutely would need these extra prongs up here in this case. We didn't create this piece here, but this one at the bottom we did create. And you can just see that everything is much more streamlined and harmonious with the design rather than something like this that just is overly bulky. So taking a look at these prongs, these are actually double claw prongs, but you can still see how sleek they are on the setting rather than being bulky. And I'm just gonna show you to wrap up the bulky prong section, how sleek these prongs can look, especially here on a solitaire and then on a halo with an emerald cut. So these are examples that you want to mimic whenever you're going for a final ring, you don't want it to be too bulky. Number three, a design that is too bulky or too thin. This is a design that we didn't create a current client. She had us recreate a design because this was the original setting that she had a custom jeweler create for her but it ultimately turned out way too bulky for what she wanted. And that center diamond was set off of the halo too high, which resulted in a gap. So what we are doing is a completely different design that is much more streamlined. And the original design that he presented to her was not bulky like this. So it was a huge disappointment when she ultimately received it in person. And next I'm going to show a design that is of the complete opposite side of the spectrum. This is an example of a setting that I did not make, but it's a perfect example of why the engagement ring cannot be made too thin uh, depth wise from outside to the inside of the ring. A lot of women ask me to make it as thin metal as possible, but the problem with doing that is this is what tends to occur is this warping effect on the engagement ring. The diamond is not even in there right now, but I got it as an example from one of my colleagues because it so perfectly illustrates what can happen. I mean, this ring is only a few months old and look, it's already warping and bending out of shape. It's not even fully round anymore. And the head obviously was knocked 
kind of onto its side. There's just not enough metal to support the weight of this type of ring. There are minimum thicknesses and depths that I suggest when designing a ring. And obviously it's gonna be sleek and just beautiful looking, but this is just entirely too thin. So this is what we try to avoid. Number four, diamonds spaced too far apart. If you take a look at the example setting on the right here, you'll notice these dark gaps in between the diamonds. And this is quite common because it allows the diamonds to extend further down without necessarily needing an extra diamond at the bottom. So it does save on material costs. And also it saves on labor costs as well, because if you have to set the diamonds right next to each other, that does take more finesse, more precision and more microscopic work in order to truly make sure they are tightly fitted next to each other with out chipping of course and so all of my pieces are done under a microscope each ring is made for one very specific size of diamond and there's not a lot of flexibility when it comes to that when it comes to a mass manufactured setting they do have a specific size of diamonds that they're using but they're not necessarily going to spend a lot of extra time making sure that they're fitted properly together in the way that is going to result in something like this so if you take a look at the one on the left and the one on the right what this results in is more seamless brilliance more sparkling white whereas rings that have gaps like this soap suds and lotions, self tanner pasta sauce if, if it splashes on your ring different things can get stuck in between these crevices and grooves and then the the ring starts to look darker overall and here's another example of how this looks and to show you how it should look this is an example of a ring that i created where you can see the diamonds being spaced incredibly close together so that way we achieve that incredible seamless brilliance that ultimately i want because i know that you really want to maximize the amount of sparkle on the setting Here's another example of a ring where the diamonds are spaced incredibly close together and even more up close so you can see how tight those diamonds are next to one another. As you can see, there really isn't a lot of room for error, so this does require precision setting. Number five, a halo with a gap. This is an example of a halo that has a dark gap of air around that center stone. And it actually ends up making the center diamond look a little bit smaller compared to if we didn't have a gap like this. I'm gonna show you some examples of what this looks like. You can see that airline gap and it draws your eye right to it. With something like this especially, that diamond is jacked up so high, even if from the top view you can't see the gap, from the three-quarter angle you absolutely do. Here's another example of that. And not only does it make the center diamond look smaller, it just, your eye is drawn to whatever the dark part is. So ideally you're only going to be focusing on bright white sparkling diamonds as opposed to something like this. Now this is ideally what a halo would look like. You don't see that, that gap between the center diamond and that halo. Even with a round diamond and a cushion halo, we can do as much as possible to minimize the gap around that despite having a completely different shape. Taking a look at how gorgeous this style of halo is. This particular one is the double edge halo, so we have diamonds on the top and diamonds on the side. But the point here is to focus on the fact that you don't see large dark gaps between the center diamond and that halo. So what we do to achieve this is we scan the shape of the diamond, especially if it's not a round shape, and we take the measurements to achieve a really tight fit. And then the actual setting process, which is where I come in, is what's going to determine whether or not it's actually tightly fit next to that halo. So you can see no matter what's going on with the style of the band, this is going to be absolutely gorgeous if it's a halo that has no gap on it. Now this particular client didn't want any diamonds on the band, so it would look like the diamond and the halo was just floating on their finger. And as you can see, it's going to be very important that that halo is incredibly seamless and just incredibly sparkling brilliant because without that, it would definitely make that center diamond look smaller, but also it just would take away from the overall lines of the design. So from every angle, whether it's the top or the three quarter angle, when your finger tilts to the side, you want to just see incredible brilliance. Now, these are only five of a dozen that I could share. So ultimately, it comes down to honoring the craftsmanship of a truly well-made ring. And, you know, I should point out that I'm approaching this from my design perspective and other designers might have a different point of view. That's totally okay. It's part of why my clients come to me and 
other people go elsewhere. And you know, I really believe there is an abundance of ring projects for everyone based on exactly what they're looking to achieve with their dream ring. So if you're looking for a ring designer and you see my pieces and love them, you know, what I'm talking about here in this video are some of the principles that lead toward that result. And when collaborating on a custom ring, my eye will catch just these subtle nuances with proportion and angles and craftsmanship that most people they're not seeing. So when I first started in this business, I thought everyone could see what I saw. And then later I realized that you know, that's just that's one of my superpowers, if you will, that sets me apart. And I'm, I'm so grateful for it because, you know, I just believe the smallest details make a dramatic difference. I'm just, I'm obsessed with maximizing diamond brilliance through precision settings. So where can things go wrong is what you see in this video. Often these mishaps, they happen with mass manufacturers, but you know, it's definitely seen in custom pieces as well because every human hand is different when it comes to craftsmanship. And while technology such as computer aided design, it's certainly helped, you know, a human hand is what ultimately takes care of the final output. So ideally you want to look at final ring photos and videos and not just CAD renderings. And, you know, I say this because oftentimes you'll see on websites, the photorealistic computer renderings, and it ends up not looking that way in the final result. So what they're showing is the design that the computer created, but it's not actually the quality and the craftsmanship that you're going to see in person. And there is something beautiful about a piece made by a human hand where any imperfections, they can act as this unique birthmark of your ring, but we're trying to achieve a balance of perfect craftsmanship while at the same time infusing the human touch. And you know, this is what identifies one artist from another. I mean, their invisible fingerprint that's left within each piece, it, it just naturally makes it truly one of a kind. And as someone who's type A and a bit of a perfectionist, I really like things done in a way that balances bringing the human spirit to a piece while also making a look as close to perfect as possible. And my best clients, they have an appreciation for the time that it takes to achieve fine craftsmanship through beautiful artistry that symbolizes the foundation of love in their marriage. And you know, one of the reasons I love making videos like this is because people get insight into how I craft a piece and they get to see the final result for themselves. For me, it's not just a ring. I want to craft something that is of course magnificent in beauty, but also meaningful and just makes each client feel proud when they wear it. So if that connects with you, please hit that like button because it really helps me out for this video. And if you enjoyed this and want to learn more about creating your own custom ring, feel free to reach out at vanessanicole.com so I can learn more about what your dream ring would look like. And in the meantime, I'm wishing for you a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.